We just got news earlier this morning that Meta is making an over $2 billion acquisition in an AI agent startup that's doing roughly 125 million in ARR. It's a hundred person team, but the startup is not even a year old. So in this video, I'm gonna highlight what the acquisition is all about, what it includes, where we go from here with Meta, and what their whole plan is with regards to integrating Manus into their main ecosystem. It's gonna be an interesting video, so let's jump right in. Okay, so if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I don't talk about Meta quite frequently because it's never been a holding. However, as of this latest month, it is a holding. It's about 7% of my portfolio. As I mentioned in previous live streams, I'm going heavier into Meta and Amazon in 2026, and I want each of them to be roughly 10 to 15% of the portfolio each. As a result, we're going to be talking about Meta more and more in 2026. Meta just came out with news earlier today that they're buying Manus. I think that's how you pronounce it but that's how we're going to pronounce it in this video. Manus, a Singapore-based uh, China-founded AI agent startup for about 2 to $3 billion is the estimation, but it's an undisclosed amount of money right now, over $2 billion. This is Meta's third largest deal ever. Of course, Instagram was bought cheaper than this. It was bought for a billion dollars, but the top ones are WhatsApp, which was purchased for $19 billion, and Oculus VR, which was purchased for about $2 billion, and Manus is going to sit at $2 billion as well for Meta. So that begs the question, okay, what is this startup and why is this important? Well, Manus launched a flagship general purpose AI agent back in March of 2025. They've already hit 100 million in ARR in just eight months. They're now doing 125 million plus run rate after processing 147 trillion tokens and running 80 million plus virtual computers. Manus in this deal is going to keep their subscription product live from Singapore, but the entire team is going to be joining Meta, effectively becoming Meta's internal agent unit plugged into Meta AI and their existing app ecosystem. Now, the market right now is kind of underwhelmed in the short term. Uh, the stock reaction is flat. It's up about 1%, but the acquisition quietly shifts Meta from being an AI infrastructure spending to monetizing AI agents. Now, in Manus's blog post, they highlight that they're joining Meta for the next era of innovation. They confirm the acquisition and that they're going to keep operating their subscription service, that they're going to stay headquartered in Singapore. Their leadership team is going to be joining Meta. Here we have the press release, Manus joins Meta, accelerating AI innovation for businesses. And it's a very short press release, and it highlights everything that we've talked about so far. So uh, here you have the post by Alex Wang, who says, excited to announce that Manus has joined Meta to help us build amazing AI products. And he says, looking forward to working with you, Red, which is the CEO who also posted. Their CEO posted that he's joining Meta to take general agents to the next level and that the team is going to continue iterating on the product for existing users. They get to now build at a scale they could have never previously imagined. He's going to be reporting now into Meta's COO. And really, I think it depends on what they end up doing with Manus and how they end up integrating it. Because from retail perspective, they're split between you know Meta finally buying an AI asset with the real revenue and real paying users that has a big focus into their integrated ecosystem, all the way down to they're buying a really expensive, shiny toy uh, to play with. So to get to the bottom of that, we have to ask ourselves, what does Manus exactly do? Well, they're a general purpose autonomous AI agent, and they can essentially act as a digital employee. They can handle tasks like market research, competitive analysis, coding, software debugging tasks, data analyst report generation, repetitive workflows. The system basically spins up these virtual computers, reads and writes files, runs tools, and chains steps to complete end-to-end -end jobs with minimal prompts. And I already mentioned the stats around 147 trillion tokens and 80 million virtual computers and $125 million ARR run rate in less than a year, which is incredibly impressive in itself. But the competitive advantage here that Manus allows Meta is the execution layer and the workflows. Manus acts as an execution layer on top of base models, focused on reliable agents that can actually finish jobs, not just having a chat prompt window. And the fact that they grew so quickly speaks to the talent and also the speed and monetization with regards to the core product offering, because they're selling subscriptions with real usage-based revenue, not just free demos or free workshops. And by locking up the team that can do it, Meta gains a competitive advantage because we know earlier this year, they were buying up engineering resources like they were soccer players, paying eight and nine figure sums in some cases for some of these engineers, just so they can improve their own AI skill set, but also take those resources away from their competitors and thereby gaining a competitive advantage. So talent is one of the key reasons why Meta wants to make this acquisition. 
roughly 100 employees are going to be joining Meta as a result of this. The CEO is going to have a very high senior role inside Meta's AI org. And this is not just a random team. It's a team that has experience building agent orchestration, virtualized environments, and tool chains. They have operational knowledge of scaling agents to millions of users. So they're a very sought after, highly skilled team in the AI space. And as we know, those resources are very scarce. And this is exactly Meta's playbook that they've been running all throughout 2025. Now, the other reason why Meta wants it is because Manus is going to be used to strengthen general purpose agent capabilities across Meta AI, across their consumer platforms like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, as well as their business products and SMB tools. Because it's an agent first product, Manus is not just an LLM wrapper, it's an orchestration layer, and that's going to be needed to convert Llama models into practical AI workers. At least that's the thought process here. With the underlying idea that this is going to allow Meta to shortcut years of internal iteration on agent UX and reliability and deploy proven workflows across the board through research coding and general operations as well. Now, in terms of my thoughts, I think it's a multiple expansion. They're paying just over 16 times revenue for a profitable, high growth AI asset. And we don't have a lot of history to know that this growth rate is sustainable or that this product has product market fit because it's only been around for less than a year. But I rest assured in two facts. Number one, this is a relatively small check for Meta to cash. And number two, that team can be repurposed and empowered through Meta's entire stack to build other products at Meta. So it's a fully formed agent business, plus it's a talent acquisition side. And then I also think from an application layer perspective that Manus is filling a gap because Meta has very strong open models in Llama, but they have fewer sticky AI applications and Manus provides an application layer and a workflow layer on top of Llama. So you got to think about the agent orchestration layer, the library of tested workflows and the team who's already been there, done that. It allows Meta to move faster in rolling something out that's more consumer phasing across its consumer apps and then the SMB side as well. And then you also have to think about the geopolitics, right? Because this company, the interesting nuance here was that it was China founded and relocated to Singapore back in July. They cut the China headcount. They're expected to have no continuing Chinese ownership post deal, but it does pose a geopolitical risk because as you're securing a strategic asset that was born out of Asia, it could be the template for further cross-border AI integration and M&A across different regions, right? Is it mostly talent? Yes, it's mostly talent acquisition in my mind. But the reason why I bring up the geopolitics is because the team is remaining in Singapore and Meta is committing to push AI hiring there as well. So what comes next is really integration. You have to think about Manus's subscription service, which will continue to be operated and sold through its own app, its own website with, with the operational headquarters remaining in Singapore. Meta is then going to operate and sell Manus while integrating its agents into the Meta ecosystem. So Meta AI, the consumer platform, the SMB tools, WhatsApp business, and all of that is going to happen over the course of 2026 and 2027. And I think that Meta is going to accelerate even further with this. I think given Meta's explicit language and Manus's capabilities, the logical next step is to have task focused agents inside Meta AI. So for example, I want to build up a research agent or a coding agent or an agent to handle my operations. Meta can do that on the back of Manus. So the way you should be thinking about this is workflow based agents in WhatsApp business. If I'm doing invoicing or support through WhatsApp business, I can now have these agents that automate a lot of my tasks for me. I don't necessarily know what they're going to do with the brand, if they're going to have it as a standalone brand, if they're going to have it like Manus provided by Meta, or if they're going to fold it all under one umbrella. That remains to be seen. It's more immaterial to the fact because Meta is going to collect that revenue anyways. But the integration point, I think, is reinforced and it's going to happen in a much faster clip now in 2026. It also reinforces this idea that Meta is more serious about agentic AI. They're not just training big models, but they're also adding this idea that you can spend now and you can monetize later because the AI total addressable market is large enough. And I think if I had to steel man the bear case, I would say one of the reasons why this is not trading up so much is because there's already concerns on EPS forecasts and on their spend. And this doesn't necessarily help assuage those fears. But I think that will very quickly turn around from a sentiment perspective if Meta can show incremental revenues that are tied specifically to agents. So for example, a new AI subscription or agent add-ons for WhatsApp and Instagram, it'll deterministically prove that the AI spend on on Manus converts to ARR and that there's going to be future ARR. So with that said, I also want to walk through a couple of interesting posts I found on X around this acquisition specifically. 
So Greg here highlights a few takeaways on why Manus got to a point that they did with rapid growth that they could actually be sold in under a year. They treated distribution as an expense, spending heavily on creators to win attention early. The spend worked because creators showed the product in use, not because they explained it. The product was simple enough that a demo did the selling without the narration. They were the first platform to really own the category of super agent. And once that attention was locked in, revenue quickly followed because the value showed up immediately. Meta probably paid 10 to 20 times revenue for the speed, the momentum, the team, and the mind share they didn't have to build. That's a very reasonable proposition because, again, it gives them speed to market on releasing something that they can have multiple expansion on if the ARR actually proves out to be there. The post continues, Man has proved that the owning the user relationship matters more than owning the underlying model. GPT wrappers are not useless after all. The operating feature was an aha moment for millions. Watching your AI actually browse the internet and take actions for you was a game changer. The team spent more time thinking about what will people screenshot rather than what benchmarks will we win. And I want to pause at that one specifically because there's one benchmark that I think is impactful in this particular deal. And it's this one. Manus AI just clocked a 2.5% score on Meta's new remote labor index. So this was a benchmark that was created by Meta themselves, designed to measure how much actual work can be done autonomously with AI. The best performing model, the state of the art model is 2.5% automation rate. That's higher than Grok4, that's higher than Claude, that's higher than Gemini or JatGPT. And that came in by Manus. So of course, we don't know what necessarily 2.5% automation actually means in the real economy, but it's a good indication that Meta is looking at this benchmark because they created the benchmark around what can we automate through AI agents to building that orchestration layer of determining what can we feasibly automate from an AI agentic orchestration layer. And by doing so, determining what is the overall addressable market once this goes prime time. And it can go prime time through all of Meta's ecosystem. So I think that question is internally going to continuously be posed in Meta post acquisition. And I think this benchmark is something that will continue to improve and eventually reach this prime time audience that will accelerate it even further. And you could see Meta on the back of this acquisition overall becoming the leader in agentic AI. And when you consider the $2 billion sum that they paid for this startup, once that reaches prime time, that's going to pay itself off in multiples. Here's Shay who highlights that Meta is making concentrated bet that the agent layer is where AI value ultimately accrues. This is currently undetermined, right? This is TBD right now, but Meta is making this bet. Uh, the post continues, the agent lives inside messaging, commerce, ads, and Meta owns a surface where intelligence turns into action and action turns into revenue. The three reasons he highlights why this acquisition matters is number one, Meta just fixed the one layer it's missing in its AI stack because it has the frontier compute, the proprietary data, the distribution, and it's missing this agentic orchestration layer. Number two, Meta is betting that agents are an execution problem, not a model problem. Because Manus is showcasing that the agentic capability does not come from a raw model IQ, but from coupling those models with tools, as well as memory, as well as this execution environment that can act reliably. Number three, this turns Meta into an agentic infrastructure platform. Manus can write code, it can run it in a sandbox machine, and it can iterate on itself consistently. And by acquiring this layer, Meta positions themselves as the place where any model can operate at scale across the entire Meta ecosystem. The post here concludes saying that Meta is positioned to monetize human attention better than anyone in the AI economy as it brings agent execution in-house with Manus. Meta has not officially disclosed the price, but we expect it to be between two and three billion, probably closer to two then closer to three. Interestingly, this deal reportedly came together in just about 10 days. So it's not something that's been in the works for months and months. It's been in the works for about two weeks now. Uh, let's share this post as well by Ricard. Uh, he said that Meta has opened the floodgates for agentic AI application layer by that acquisition of Manus. And the difference here is the execution of these high level tasks through automation. And the unique part about this is that it uses this architecture called code act. Instead of just talking about a problem, it, it writes a Python script on the fly to solve it. It executes that script in the sandbox and it looks at the result. And here he continues to highlight the actual nitty gritty of how it works. But I want to scroll down to this part down here around why this fits into the meta ecosystem, saying that meta is building the super intelligent AI assistant for every person. It aligns with what they're trying to do. And the best fit is in WhatsApp as an assistant so they can offer it both to consumers and to businesses. They can also introduce it as an autonomous agentic system for the Ray-Ban sunglasses 
to essentially help their smart glasses division as well. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that Manus can integrate into Meta. So I think it's a good acquisition. It doesn't seem like a very expensive acquisition, everything considered, especially considering the vision and the size of the market that we're playing in. I think this is an acquisition that I'm pretty fond of, quite frankly, because Meta is making their intentions very clear around what they think the winner of this space is going to be and where they're putting their money. Anyways, that's my high level thoughts on this acquisition. I mean, I'm very happy as a Meta shareholder, even though I'm a recent shareholder, I'm probably going to be acquiring more Meta stock, quite frankly. And it all remains to be seen around how the integration is going to work and how the execution works. And if in fact, this agentic orchestration layer does become the future of where a lot of the value is going to be derived in the AI sector. It's still to be determined, but I think from Meta making that bet, there's a lot of research that goes behind it. And generally speaking, they've been pretty spot on with all of their acquisitions. If you think of this company that's acquired Instagram for a billion dollars and then WhatsApp for 19 billion and Oculus for 2 billion, like this is a company that doesn't generally miss with their acquisition. So I'm very excited to see where this one goes. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know Meta is not something in our wheelhouse, but uh, let me know if you'd want to see more Meta videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.